Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I'm going to compare the RAW format and the JPEG format with an iPhone 7. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramli, I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the amazing, romantic city of Paris, France. And I'm actually flying back to Paris tomorrow. Uh, and then I'm going to Italy for my workshops. I'm really excited about that. All right, in this week's episode, I wanted to talk to you about the new capabilities of iPhones to shoot RAW format versus JPEG. Is it really useful? Does it make really a difference? And you know, I like to do landscapes in low light situations, so it's a good opportunity to check. Don't forget to click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel and the link below this video will give you all the RAW and JPEG files that I shot that I'm going to show you now so you can see for yourself. Sometimes on video you don't see as good as when you download the RAW files and see for yourself. All right, so let me show you a cool app to shoot RAW files and let's retouch them in Lightroom. So the app that I want to show you today is called Pro Camera. I'm going to click on it and this is uh, actually the best app I find to shoot uh, RAW files with uh, an iPhone 7 Plus or an iPhone 6 Plus. You just need to have iOS 10. And basically, uh, you see here it says ISO 25 and 1 500 of a second. That is the most important thing. If you want to get good RAW files with your iPhone, you're going to make sure your ISO is always at the lowest possible. In this case, 25. I'll show you why later in the video. So I'm going to be at 25. And all you have to do then is to play with the speed, since the f-stop is already built in. Uh, all you have to do is play with the speed to get, you know, how much dense you want your photo. All right. So basically, only you're only playing with one setting, which is speed. That's it. The ISO is always fixed. You're on a tripod, you know. So even if you get a low light situation, you just can increase your seconds, and you're good to go. Uh, if you click here on these three little bars here, you got a lot of options. Uh, one thing which is really cool is uh, of course the self timer. I'm gonna put the self timer on so that when I press, it's gonna wait one or two seconds. It's always a safety mode for long exposure. And uh, the most important here is this. You see here it says RAW plus JPEG. So you've got a choice between just RAW, TIFF, JPEG, or RAW plus JPEG. For this uh, video, I'm gonna shoot in RAW plus JPEG so you can see the difference in the advantage of RAW versus JPEG. And voila, you also have uh, three different zooms, wide, dual, or you can go tele to really zoom in on your photo. I'm gonna go on wide and voila. And so when I, when I press the shutter, it just takes a shot. Now I'm a very high speed, so I don't really need a self timer. If I wanted to have the self timer, I would click here. It would go one, two seconds and take the shot. Uh, now this is not the scene I wanted to show you. I took this, uh, pro camera app and I went to really drastic uh, sunsets that I want to show you the result on. But voila, this is really simple and uh, you can also of course change the white balance here, you know, blue to orange. So that's really cool. But since we're shooting RAW, we can always change it afterwards. Now, once you've shot RAW and you go into Snapseed, that's the cool thing. I'm going to show you once you go into something, I'm going to open and I'm going to take... Uh, for example, this is a row photo that I ta took when I was at the ski. And because it's a row file, you have a new option in Snapseed. You know, you see these two logos here and you can change the exposure, the highlights, the shadows, the contrast, the structure, the temperature and the tint. These options will only appear uh, in this, in, when you have a row file. So it's kind of like a row development for uh, especially for snap seeds when it detects that it's a raw file. So that's also an advantage of shooting raw. But I'm gonna show you how to sh uh, edit your raw files in Lightroom because it's still the best program to edit raw files. Before I show you the result, really quick, if you go to my website, photosearch.com, and you click on my gear, and if you don't have Lightroom, or don't have Photoshop, you're not a Creative Cloud member, 
I'm an Adobe Affinity Partner, meaning you can create an account, a free account on my website, and then you can get 20% off on Photoshop and Lightroom. That is $7.99 if you're in the US for Photoshop and Lightroom, or $42.49 or $50 for all the software from Adobe, the Adobe Creative Cloud, the full. So 15% off or 20% off. Now, $7.99 for Lightroom and Photoshop is like not even the price of two coffee at Starbucks, I think is a good deal. All right, so I wanted to show you a little bit the difference between the JPEG and the RAW files and why it's very important if you want to take, you know, uh, nice low light photos with your iPhone um, with, you know, uh, RAW versus JPEG. So with Pro Camera, as I showed you every time I was pressing the shutter, I was getting two files, one JPEG and one RAW. So this is the JPEG and this is the RAW uh, of the same photo. Actually, they... Okay, let me reset this one. So you see the, the raw file is going to have more information on top and bottom. And this one, it, it doesn't have the same aspect ratio. I believe this is a 16 by 9 and this is a 4 four by 3. But I'm not sure. I am not sure at all. Uh, in any case, you have more information on the raw file. So the good thing is because it's a raw file, now this one is... is I, I made the mistake of shooting at ISO 40, so I'm gonna get a bit of noise, and that's what I wanna show you later on in this video, is that if you wanna get the best result, and the number one reason why to use an app like Pro Camera is to make sure that your ISO is at 25, the lowest possible. I, per my own experimentation, if you go higher than ISO 25, I mean, ISO 40 is still fine, but like ISO 100, for example, will give you a lot of noise, especially in low light situation where you have a lot of darks. So the, good, the cool thing is, let me show you this. Uh, I can just, you know, open up the shadows, bring down the highlights. Now, this is iPhone. So when it's iPhone, I, it's not as powerful as a DSLR or as a mirrorless RAW files. I don't do my usual plus 100, minus 100. But what I love about it, because since it's a RAW file, I'm in Lightroom, I can choose which white balance that I want. So, for example, I'm going to go to my famous white balance, which is cloudy, and add a little bit of magenta because uh, that's kind of the look that I really want to go for, and I'm really happy with that. This is, by the way, a photo of the canal in Venice uh, Beach, and not Venice, Italy, and it's really cool. I've never been there. I was there last weekend with my wife, and we really enjoyed it. It was really nice. I'm going to add a bit of vibrance, and I'm going to crop it. I think there's too much information here. I'm going to crop it. That boat is distracting. Uh, I'm going to crop it right above these two trees, because I, all, I, all I really care is these clouds there. Uh, let me take this out for a sec. Uh, one thing that I like to do, so let's see the noise. I mean, I'm ISO 40, so there is a bit of noise in the shadows you can see here. I don't know if you can see it in the video. In any case, all these files, I'm giving it to you so you can see them by yourself. The rows and the JPEGs are uh, below uh, in the link under this video on YouTube. Okay, one thing I usually do is remove chromatic aberration, on about profile correction. You see, it, it detects that it's an iPod iPhone 7. So as I told you, the RAW files only work if you have iOS 10 and with an iPhone 6s, 6 Plus, uh, an iPhone 7, and iPhone 7 Plus. So meaning if you have an iPhone 6, it's not going to work. That's what several websites says. I don't have an iPhone 6 to test. So iOS 10 and iPhone 6s on. You can play with that. But I think it's really cool because like I was skiing last week and the only, f you know, I didn't dare bring my Sony A7R2 with, I was afraid to break it if I fall. So I only had my iPhone with me and I got some really cool snow photos uh, that I could only get because the best camera you have is the one you have on you. All right. So one last thing I want to do on this one is I want to fake a little bit some back of the sun here. So I'm going to do a little radial filter here. I'm going to invert the mask, feather it. I'm going to go here to temp. So everything is going coming down to zero except the temperature, and maybe just add a bit of yellowish in here, just to add a little bit of light and a bit of saturation, maybe just to you know the sun was there and it was kind of gone, so I'm just adding it back a little bit. Please don't tell anyone. Okay, so that's just my basic retouching um, on this photo. Uh, if I press the backslash key on my keyboard, I'll show you the before. Okay, and the after. It's cool. It's a cool photo. I, I, I really like it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you this. I'm going to select the JPEG, and I'm going to click on Synchronize, and I'm going to do all what I did now on the JPEG. And look, this is how it looks. Uh, it does not look at all like my RAW file. It looks really ugly. So I'm going to click on C to compare both photos so you can see the difference 
On my right is the RAW file, on my left is the JPEG. Now the reason why it looks so different is because it's a JPEG and so it does not know how to interpret the white balance. Let me show you this to you. I'm going to go on this one and I can fix that. I can make it look very similar to the other one. So I'm going to go back in the develop module. And if you see here, uh, if I go here, I don't have all the same options in white balance and the numbers are completely different because it's a JPEG and the white balance has been baked in by the iPhone. So I can still play around, I can still make it more blue and add some magenta, you know, so to give it a same look. I can still go into the red or circle, which is here, uh, and maybe, you know, make it a bit bigger. Somehow it's not the same. Uh, add a bit of magenta there, a bit of saturation to still make it look cool. But the one thing that I find that is very different, and I don't think you can see that on a video, I'm gonna show you both of them. I'm gonna select both and click on C. So to compare them both and shift tab to go full screen so we can really see. So on my left, uh, you have the JPEG on my right, you have the the, um, the raw files. Uh, if I zoom in, you see, I, I can really see the JPEG compression, meaning there is some, like the the, the the clouds look kind of weird. They look like groups of pixels. I'm not sure you can see that on YouTube. That's why I'm giving you the raw files. Also, there is more noise in, uh, in uh, you know, in, in the lights here. And um, yeah, overall, this is not a photo you can print. This is a photo you can print. So it's really, you know, it's just, yeah, I could use this for Instagram, but I could not do a print. I think the, 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 the quality, if you shoot at 25 ISO with an iPhone 7, is pretty cool and I think you can do some stuff. Let me show you a, a more extreme example. This is a sunset uh, that I shot. So that's the wrong version. That's what, that's the that's the ISO 40. Where is the, let me show you the, um, yeah, that's the ISO 20 version. Okay, that's a DNG file. And I wanted to show this to you. So let me develop this. Uh, so, I'm, so I'm at ISO 20, but I really underexposed the photo because there was a lot of brightness there. And you know how I like to underexpose my photo. So I'm gonna open up the shadows and you see it's gonna still at ISO 20, this is still gonna bring tons of noise. Okay, and on this one, I'm at ISO 20 because I'm underexposed, you see? So I'm not gonna bring the shadows all the way. I'm just gonna be like minus 48, maybe a bit of highlights, maybe a little bit of white. I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm gonna go into cloudy again and add some magenta, you know, and add some vibrance, you know, and now I got a cool photo of Hollywood. Maybe add even more contrast. Let me show you the before. A backslash key for the before and the after. Not a huge deal, but you know, it's still a, it's, it's still a, a definite cool, uh, you know, sunset and, and the reason why the reason why it's so dark and there's so much noise is because I underexposed it. The problem is that the iPhone don't have such a great dynamic range. But anyways, I can still, you know, go here and go into the noise reduction and uh, I can still do the noise reduction here. Okay, and I'm gonna go like plus 30 on noise reduction and maybe just add 70 of sharpening. You know, I always have this formula where where whatever I do in, in noise reduction, I deduct from 100 and that gives me the sharpening. But remember, also we have some color noise there. You see, so I'm gonna boost the color noise up to about 50 uh, and it takes that out here. And then I'm gonna do the masking. The masking is that, you know, anything which is black is not gonna get sharpened. So I only want sharpening on the, you know, on just the, basically the outline of things. Okay. And this way I got a pretty decent photo. Now, this is ISO 20. If I select my ISO 100 and I synchronize what I did here, okay, and then I go here, look at the difference. I mean, the white balance is, is completely different, but look at the noise. Let me add some more warmth to it. Look at the noise. And that is ISO 100, no, sorry, that's ISO 400. And this, and this is ISO 20. Look at the difference of noise. Let me press C for, for compare so you can see. Look at this. So that's why you need to work with a tripod and that's why you need to have a pro camera. You need to make sure your ISO stays at 20. That's the morale of the story here. Let's see what else do we have here. Uh, I wanted to show you, what is that? That's a JPEG. So same thing, if I take these two photos and I synchronize what I did on the raw files, oh sorry, I gotta go back to the develop module. So here I am on my raw file, I'm selecting my JPEG and I'm gonna synchronize what I did. It's gonna look completely different. 
uh, it's going to look more yellow. And honestly, on this one, it kind of worked well. Uh, the problem is that when you start zooming in, uh, I'm going to press C2 so we can really zoom in. And if you, pr if I start zooming in on the photos, I can really see that the, the, the there is a lot less noise in a JPEG. But you see, it looks almost like a painting because uh, basically what I did is the, um, the noise reduction that I did on my RAW file was added to the noise reduction that was already done in, in the iPhone. And so you almost have like a painting look now on the JPEG, which you don't have on the RAW file. So big, big difference. You know, you don't see it so much if you put it on Instagram because it's small photos, but if you print it or if people can zoom in on your photos, you're better off shooting RAW. And one last thing, this is the difference between F25, sorry, ISO 25 uh, and ISO 32. So it's only very little difference. But even then, I want to show you, uh, if I open the shadows here at ISO 25, a lot of noise. And if I do the same thing here, I find there is even a lot more noise at ISO 32. Uh, so we have ISO 25 on the right and ISO 32. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there's a lot more noise here. So again, make sure you always have the lowest ISO, so 2025. Uh, if you want to get really nice photos, make sure you're underexposed a little bit of your photo, but not too much, and you don't open your shadows too much. Voila. I hope that helps, and, uh, you know, uh, I really find this app Pro Camera so easy to use, and it really gives me photos with the iPhone that I can use. I mean, I could actually really print this photo. I could really, uh, where is this one, the other one? Uh, I could really pr probably print this one, you know, do something decent with it, which honestly was not possible I, until iOS 10 came out and I could shoot RAW files. I never took seriously the iPhone for photos, but now I'm thinking that there is a possibility there. If you want to go deeper into smartphone photography, I actually created a $4.99 course for one and a half hours of course on smartphone photography, where I really show you some of the best photo I ever took with an iPhone and give you all kinds of tricks for composing, for doing long exposures, for shooting flowers, for doing a slow shutter, uh, how to retouch with Snapseed, how to retouch with Lightroom for mobile, a lot of things and how to use also Android in my favorite Android apps. So you can find the link of this uh, below this video or if you go to my website, you can just search course and tap smartphone or even smart and you will find it right away here. Voila. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like it. If you do like it, it really helps. And also if you can leave a little comment of things you would like to learn from me, that would be really awesome. Or any comments at all, any likes, any share would really help. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode. Au revoir.